Nowhere to walk. That's the title of the recent Primetime News In Focus report highlighting the problem of vendors taking over sidewalks in towns across Jamaica, but particularly in the corporate area, leaving pedestrians to the dangers of walking in the streets. It's an issue that has been ongoing for decades, but through her expose, TVJ's reporter Sandy Williams has again brought it to the fore with some shocking revelations. I'm Herman Green and Sandy Williams now joins us on PTN+. Plus. Sandy, welcome. Thank you, Herman. All right, first of all, excellent reporting there in your report. Thank uh, you. But I want to start with our discussion now with the complaints from some of those pedestrians who spoke to you in your report. Or first, um, first, let's hear those complaints. Buildings on the sidewalks for them to sell, then we really leave the pedestrians to walk in the road. You understand? So then that causes a lot of traffic congestion because you have vehicles in the road, you have people in the road. So I think better provision should be made. The government or the municipal corporation should do better in terms of providing spaces for people so that they can sell and apply them wares instead of them having to be in on the sidewalks and then forcing pedestrians to be on the street. So when a car bunks it down and him drive gone, who take care of your foot when you mash up? The shop not for the on the sidewalk, none at all. We're supposed to have sidewalks to walk. It affects you as a motorist because it's short in your concentration. Because instead of concentrating on the road driving, you have to concentrate on somebody walking out in the road unexpectedly. The sidewalk must leave clear for the road to leave clear because people will just suddenly walk out in the road and unknowingly walk into your vehicle and you are going to be the one who gets charged for it. Nobody's going to say, boy, is the person fault to walk out. So those are those pedestrians who were complaining about the issue. But from what you did on the road, Sandy, you would have realized that it affects several other groups. Most definitely. So when you look at the disabled community, I mean, in the report, we did not get to speak with anybody from that community. But in reality, they also use the roadways. They also use the sidewalks. When you think about a blind man using a cane or somebody in a wheelchair, exactly. how I does I that impact them? At one them? point, you, you actually measured the width of the road, the sidewalk that was left for pedestrians or, as you said, wheel, wheelchair bound persons to use. That was just three feet. A wheelchair is probably five or so feet that they need to work with, right? Yes, and that is one of the reasons why the National Works Agency, the NWA, says the sidewalk should be at least eight feet wide. And if it should be smaller, it should be no less than five feet wide. And this is to accommodate the different Groups people or the different groups that would have to use these sidewalks. All right, what, what stood out to me mainly from your report, and I'm sure to a, a lot of our viewers, was the fact that some of these shops were actually sanctioned by MPs and the municipal corporation. What stood out to you mainly? That is a point that also stood out to me most because we expect the authorities to do better in terms of permitting vending areas. Now, the CEO of the, the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, Robert Hill, said the corporation has a special vending zone project and areas like Red Hills Road was selected under the project. Now, he also said that an assessment would have been done before permitting this area as a vending zone. But it begs the question, when was this assessment done? Because now we have the stars impeding traffic pedestrian traffic and vehicular traffic. Right. So there certainly needs to be a revaluation of the, the, the process that was done. The assessment that was done for do, in that the first and place. other areas. And but, other areas. Right, but as you mentioned, Robert Hill, we actually have that uh, bite from Mr. Hill, where he explained that process of allowing persons the right to sell in these areas. The parochial markets law and particularly the vending regulations can permit that once the encroachment is not going to significantly impede the movement of vehicle and pedestrian traffic. So what would happen? An inspection would be done, recommendations would be made, and those recommendations include the the measurement of the sidewalk itself, um, the amount of traffic that, that can take, and of course, the, the, the level of encroachment that can be maintained responsibly in any one space. So those things can happen, and they have been, they have been permitted across the city. All right, as you said, you spoke to him about that in terms of um, the, the procedure to uh, authorize persons to sell in these areas. Mm -hmm. You pointed out Red Hills Road. Just remind us of some of the other areas that you saw in the corporate area. 
there's also in Marvelly on West Main Drive. Now, those shops were also built by the Member of Parliament at the time. It was Derek Smith, I think his name was. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the vendors are there now. Some of them are unlicensed. But one woman told me that she just, she was given the shop and so she's utilizing the facility. I mean, even though these, these structures, structures these right? were built and gifted to the vendors, there's also the, the um, formalization process, as, as in registering these persons who are operating the shops. Right. So they build the structures, give the vendors, but the vendors are unlicensed. Right. So they're still operating illegally. Illegally, basically. You exactly. said um, that's in Marvelly, Red Hills Road. I think uh, Crab Circle, Hero Circle was Crab another one. Crab Circle is another area. Just this year, the Municipal Corporation and the Minister of Local Government, along with a corporate entity, renovated the stores on the sidewalk for the crab vendors. And while we were there, we witnessed a woman walking with two children on the road because the sidewalk was impassable. Yeah, and the structure there, I don't know if many persons are familiar with it at uh, Crab Circle. The, the shops are on the sidewalk. Persons drive up at the curb and they actually do transactions pretty much across the sidewalk. So you walking on the sidewalk, you'd actually be walking between uh, parked cars and the shops, pots they are cooking and all of that. But Crab Circle, I just said, that's another one. With those, I saw that shot with the two children and her mother mm -hmm. or her guardian. That was really, really, really troubling. Interestingly to note, Herman, one of the vendors there, they, first of all, they did not wish to speak on camera. But one of the vendors told me that the, the corporation's work there is not finished. There are plans to go back there to put in place bathroom facilities. And this is on the sidewalk. Whoa. So when, when that expansion happens, it, it, you're, is it that you're sending a message that it is okay to build these facilities on the sidewalk. Is it okay for pedestrians to walk in the road? Mm -hmm. And in the complaints, we heard the motorists raise the question, who's, who's going to take the blame when a motorist hits a, a pedestrian because Just of the structures? The road. Right. Well, safety is one issue that you pointed out uh, in terms of persons walking. But you also spoke about safe security in terms of police access and so on. Talk to us a bit about that. Yes. In, in certain areas, for example, downtown Kingston would be one of the prime examples where you would have persons build up structures on the sidewalks. And because of this, it makes the roadway impassable because it causes chaos in the street because you have pedestrians in the street and motors in the street. So when the police are alerted to certain emergencies, it is hard for them to maneuver through the chaotic road scene right. to get to wherever they need to get to, to render assistance, rescue somebody. I mean, in, in, in downtown Kingston, they have high reports of robberies. So in that case, you would need to have the roadways free of any um, impediments right. so that you can give the police or emergency responders easy access because you also have to take into consideration firefighters as well if, they, if the need arise for them to respond to a fire in the area. Mm -hmm. I mean that's just one location. We have sections in halfway tree. Um, it's not as bad as downtown Kingston but it still causes pedestrians to go on the road. It still causes and it's still an impediment to vehicular traffic and pedestrians. Right. Um, well, security is there. And you also mentioned, as you mentioned earlier, about uh, persons being uh, authorized or licensed to actually sell. There's also the issue of uh, electricity theft and facilities there. What did you see when you did your investigation? Yes. So safety in terms, the concern for safety is not just for pedestrians and motorists, but the vendors themselves. Because a lot of these vendors, they have access to electricity, but is the electricity um, connected through the formal channel? No, it's not. And so you have to think about what, what can happen when it rains, for example. Mm. And, and so, you say, your question, if it is connected, there might be some who are connected legally. I'm not sure if that is the case, but there might be some. But the vast majority, would you say, are not connected legally? The vast majority are connected illegally. Okay. And that is a, a, a concern because you also 
I've also observed that some of these vendors, they have children who, after sc leaving school in the days, they would come and spend the, the rest of the day at these facilities. You don't know what can happen. And, and, and these electricity connections are not safely covered. They are exposed. So they can, they can start a fire. They can electrocute a child. Right. And so we have to take into consideration building the structures to give to the vendors is one thing. But are you concerned about other, other factors that threatens their safety and security? Of them and other of persons. Of them and around. other persons using the area. All right, I want to move a bit away from uh, the, the issues there. You also spoke about uh, enforcement. The police basically said their hands are tied. I think Stephanie Lindsay uh, of uh, the police communication arm, she basically said the fine of $4, that's what you saw in the books, $4 for, for illegal vending, is that yes, it? Yes, Herman, yes, that is it. The Main Road Act of 1973 states that basically any encroachment without permission is a breach and the person found in that breach can be charged for Jamaican dollars. <laughs> now, you, the, the, the act is dated 1973, so that will tell you that the establishment of this act was a long time ago, and back then, $4 was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But we're in 2022. And, and all of that needs to be revised. As I think some time ago, we did a report looking at all of these old laws and old fines. We're still awaiting that to be updated. But uh, you said, in terms of, before you even get to the $4, Yes. The police have, have to go through channels in order to prosecute somebody. Exactly. According to the law, what happens when, when persons build encroachments on sidewalks, first of all, the, the municipal corporation is responsible to serve these persons a notice. Now, the notice will state a period in which these persons need to remove the structures. If they fail to remove the structures within that time period, then they would be um, charged and sent to court, and that is where they would be required to pay the $4 or, or maybe pay, serve prison time. Right, which of But course. also the structures would be removed. Mm -hmm. The structures would be removed, and in some cases their goods would be seized. Right. But one of the things the police pointed out is that because the fine is so low, these persons can actually budget for it for the case, in the case that they get caught. Right. And so, is it really a deterrent? Well, uh, enforcement aside, in doing your report, you would have spoken with the NWA, the National Works Agency, the Municipal Corporation, the police. What, are, what is each of these bodies saying in terms of going forward? All right, first of all, Herman, everything leads back to the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation. So they would have to make the first step because the police cannot enforce or go and remove these people without something being served to them. Right. And that, that, that notice has to come from the KSAFC, as well as the NWA cannot um, prosecute persons for these encroachments without, again, the municipal corporation's support. So that the municipal corporation has to take the first step. And based on what Robert Hill told me, he said, going forward, they are going to try to schedule a meeting with all of these vendors in these areas to see what they can do to make changes in terms of relocation, if that is needed, or uh, rehabilitate the area to facilitate both the vendors and pedestrians to, to you know, alleviate the challenges. Right, and basically, I think an overhaul in some of these areas is needed because I think, I just said Crab Circle, it's almost impossible for both vendors and pedestrians to be in that small space. So are they thinking of actually, in terms of relocation, well, you wouldn't know because they say they're planning to have that discussion. Yeah, but the funny thing is, you know, Erman, when you, when you visit Crab Circle, there's a section on the Hero Circle side of the road that the sidewalk is more than wide enough to accommodate vendors and pedestrians. Okay. And that is across from the crab circle. I mean, why not consider putting the vendors there? Moving them from one side onto the, actually on the side of the park. Yes, that is correct. Because the, the, as I said, the sidewalk is more than wide enough to accommodate both vendors and pedestrians. And 
it's a win-win situation because you move them, they, they will still be in the area, so they will be still serving the community. Persons won't have to go all over, all over the corporate area to try and locate them to get their crab and their soup. But at the same time, pedestrians will have their sidewalk. Right. And I think on that side, as you pointed it out, there is probably even space for parking if you, if you restructure the area properly. Exactly. One of the things the NAA, the NAA had pointed out is that it's a matter of poor planning. Right. And it's a matter of poor planning because going back to what Robert Hill had said about the assessment, during that time when the assessment was done, one would think the authorities would have a time frame in which they would reassess these areas. Right. Because again, the population has increased, the vendor population has increased, and also vehicular traffic has increased. You have more persons driving um, mm -hmm. their own vehicles right. now than back then. So more vendors, so, more customers, and more pedestrians in the area. So it exactly. definitely needs to be revisited by the authorities. That is correct. Right. As I said before, Sandy, uh, excellent work there with your report. I know a lot of Jamaicans have seen it, and persons overseas as well, and they are quite impressed and hoping to see some change as a result of your report? Well, I, I, hope, I hope so too, because it's really a serious issue when you think about it. I mean, when you think about school children coming from school, I mean, they're not always the most focused on the road. Right. So let's, let's forget the adults for a minute and think about the children. So if not, if not for anybody else, consider the safety and security of the children on the street. Definitely. Thank you very much. Sandy Williams, our reporter with TVJ Newsroom. And that's it for PTN Plus once again. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Herman Green.